Hi everybody, how are you doing today? It's Miss Britt from the Ridgewood Public Library, although today we're doing our story time from uh, my home office, if you will. Um, I have a bunch of books today that are all about eating. So, how about we start off with a really quick round of hello everybody. You ready for that one? We're just going to sing hello to everybody. Hello everybody, yes indeed, yes indeed, yes indeed. Hello everybody, yes indeed, yes indeed, my darling. Hello everybody. So my first book today is called Tony Baroni Loves Macaroni, and this is by Marilyn Sadler, and the pictures are by Lucy Cravato. Tony Baroni Loves Macaroni. Tony Baroni, he loved macaroni. He ate it with butter. He ate it with cheese. He ate it for breakfast. He ate it at noon, then he ate it for dinner with a big serving spoon. Oh, mamma mia, cried Nona Sophia. I cooked lasagna. I roasted potatoes. I fried zucchini and sliced ripe tomatoes. No, Nona, please, just macaroni and cheese. Nona made oodles of other good noodles, so she served Tony spinach cannelloni. No, Nona, please, just macaroni and cheese. Nona cooked penne with tomatoes and cheese, bow ties with broccoli and spaghetti with peas. No, Nona, please. Just macaroni and cheese. Nona served rotini and meat tortellini, ravioli with yam, and rigatoni with ham. No, Nona, please. Just macaroni and cheese. One day, Tony Baroni, who loved macaroni, who ate it with butter, who ate it with cheese, who ate it for breakfast, who ate it at noon, who ate it for dinner with a large serving spoon, knew just what he wanted to eat. Enough macaroni, enough cheese. How about pizza with tomatoes and peas? Now Tony eats pizza for breakfast. He eats pizza at noon pizza for breakfast. He eats pizza with peas by the light of the moon. The end. Good listening, everybody. Good job. Silly Tony, right? Okay, how about we do If You're Happy and You Know It? Ready for that one? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Peekaboo. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Peekaboo! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo! Peekaboo! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! Good job, everybody. Very good. Okay, my next book is called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. This is by Eric Carle. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. <clears throat> oh, there's the sun. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Do you see the egg? One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop 
Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. But he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. Should we count them? One, two, three, four, five. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. Look how sad he looks. Oh, oh, he's so sad. He ate too much. The next day was Sunday again, and he ate through one nice green leaf. After that, he felt much better. Now, he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. Good listening, everybody. Very good job. Okay, how about we do the wheels on the bus, okay? So let's get in the bus. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The doors on the bus, they open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. The doors on the bus, they open and shut, all through the town. The windows on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The windows on the bus go up and down, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all through the town. Good job. Very good. Okay. Our next book is called Pete's a Pizza by William Steed. Ready for this one? Pete's a Pizza. Pete is in a bad mood. Just when he's supposed to play ball with his friends, it decides to rain. Aw, rainy day. Pete's father can't help noticing how miserable his son is. He thinks it might cheer him up to be made into a pizza. So he sets him down on the kitchen table and starts kneading the dough. He's pushing in it and kneading it and stretching it this way and that. Now the dough gets whirled and twirled in the air. That looks like fun. Next, some oil is generously applied. It's really just water. Then comes some flour. That's really talcum powder. And then some tomatoes. They're really checkers. Pete can't help giggling when his mother says she doesn't like tomatoes on her pizza. All right, says his father, no tomatoes, just some cheese. The cheese is pieces of paper. How about some pepperoni, Petey? Pete 
can't answer because he's only some dough and stuff. But when that dough gets tickled, he laughs like crazy. Pizzas are not supposed to laugh. Pizza makers are not supposed to tickle their pizzas. Well, says his father, it's time for this pizza to be put in the oven. Ah, now our pizza is nice and hot. It's a good thing he doesn't put them in the real oven, right? Pretend oven. Pete's father brings the pizza to the table. It's time to slice our pizza, he says. Pete's laughing at that. I guess that tickles. But the pizza runs away, and the pizza maker chases him. The pizza gets caught and hugged. Now the sun has come out. And so the pizza decides to go look for his friends. The end. Good listening, everybody. Good job. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope that you have a good day today. Bye.